Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph f of x equals sine of x plus pi over 6 plus 1. And to go ahead and do this, the first thing we need to do is I kind of understand what exactly are each of these, trans, um, each of these numbers going to do to affect our graph. So to do that, we look at the transformation kind of function um, for sine of x. Okay, so you can see that we don't have an A, we don't have a B, but we do have a C here and we do have a D. So how are, how are those values going to affect our parent graph? Because we need to kind of understand at least what the parent graph looks like and then go ahead and apply that to our different transformations. So, okay. Um, ba, 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 ba. So what we want to do to solve for sine, we want to figure out the amplitude, the period, the x scale, the phase shift, and the vertical transformations. So I'm going to kind of go through how we figure out each one of those. The amplitude is the absolute value of a. The period is 2 pi divided by b. x scale is the period divided by 4. Phase shift is bx minus c equal to 0. Whatever's inside your parentheses, set equal to 0. And your vertical transformation is d. Did I say that all fast enough? Sorry, I've just made a couple of these videos, so it's the same thing over and over and over again. So I kind of go a little quick. All right, so we can look in this equation. Um, so now we're going to be looking up here and seeing what do, we, what do we have and how is it going to affect our graph. So our amplitude is our a. Well, we don't have an a. Well, technically we do. It's a 1. So the absolute value of 1 is just 1. Our period is going to be 2 pi divided by b, which in this case, again, is 1. So 2 pi divided by 1 is just 2 pi. Our x scale is our period divided by 4. So I take 2 pi divided by 4, which equals pi halves. And so far, this is all the same right, as our, as our parent graph. However, now we're getting something a little bit different with our phase shift, which is x plus pi over 6 equals 0. So to solve for uh, x, I need to subtract pi over 6, subtract pi over 6, x equals a negative pi over 6. And my vertical translation is equal to 1. That means I'm going to actually shift the, take the whole graph and shift it up 1. Now, all right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to graph each one of these translation, each one of these trans, um, trans yeah, each translation actually, um, separately to kind of combine them all together. So I'm going to do one at a time. Now, the first thing we want to do is make sure we understand what actually, never mind. Now, Never mind, I'm just going to do, I'm actually going to start it correctly because I don't want to mess up this phase shift. This is going to be um, not so fun. So what I typically like to do when we graph the sine graph, we always kind of start at 0, right? That's what we call the initial period. But when we have a phase shift, I want to start at my phase shift. So let's pretend here is 0. Okay, And let's start at negative pi over 6. Now, 0 usually was our starting point, but now negative pi over 6 is going to be. But remember, for our period, there are four x scales. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we just need to determine what, is the, you know, what are each one of those. Now we know the distance between each one of those is pi halves. Right? That's pi halves. That's pi halves. The distance of this one is pi halves. These two are pi halves. So the distance between each one of these is all pi halves. We just now need to be able to figure out what exactly the value. So to do that, just take negative pi over 6 plus pi halves. Well, to get that, I need to get common denominators. I'm just doing a little fraction work. And I'll show you how, it, uh, how this is going to help me out as well. So therefore, I have negative pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6, which equals 2 pi over 6, which equals um, one third. So this is pi over 3. Now I just do that again. Pi over 3 plus um, pi halves. Well, let's do 2 pi over 6. 2 pi over 6 plus pi halves. Again, multiply by 3 over 3. And therefore, you get 5 pi over 6. So then this would be 5 pi over 6. The next one is going to be 8 pi over 6. If you kind of just follow the pattern, this is 2 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, and this one would be 11 pi over 6. 
And then let's do two periods. So the next one is going to be 14 pi over 6, 17 pi over 6, 20 pi over 6. So let's see, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, and then we do one more, 23 pi over 6. Now obviously some of these we can reduce, right? This can reduce down to 4 thirds, 4 pi over 3. This can be reduced down to 7 thirds. This can be reduced down to 10 thirds. OK, so you can go ahead and reduce those. So now you have your x scale, which I said I, that's why I didn't want to graph the parent function in there, because I knew it was going to be a little difficult. Uh, not really difficult. It's just going to kind of be a little confusing if we have the regular x scale in there. Um, so now we have our x scale and we have our period. So 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the period of my first, that's the first initial period. And that's my second period. And usually we want to do at least complete two um, periods for our graph. All right. So the last thing is we know our amplitude goes up one and down one, right? So even though we're still starting, remember its sign always starts at the x intercept and goes up to its maximum. So the maximum is 1 to negative 1. But now what I'm doing. So yeah, usually I'd go up one to its max, to its min, or to its intercept, to its minimum, back up again, right? That is me satisfying. Wait, why did I go? Oh, what am I doing? That's the next part, right? Up here, down to its intercept, down to its minimum, back up. My apologies. I got confused with that x-intercept, and it happens uh, to a lot of students as well. So be careful. But now what I'm simply doing is taking each one. And so instead of graphing this as my graph, I'm taking this and shifting it exactly one, um, one whole unit up. So what I like to do a lot of times is whenever I'm shifting up or down, I like to say, all right, where's the x-axis and how far am I moving it up or down? Because if I'm moving it up, I'm just going to rewrite that x-axis up above there. So now it makes a little bit more sense for me saying, oh, well, this point was on the x-axis here. Now it's on my moved up x-axis. And then, so if that's 1, now I need to go up to 2. So 1, up 2, back to my imaginary axis, now to its minimum, back up to the axis. So now you can see my graph looks something like this. And then I will just continue the pattern up there. So again, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, this continues on and on forever. But that is at least your two initial periods for how to graph sine of x plus pi over 6 plus 1. Thanks.